The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN Tuesday morning, 9.06 a.m. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we have markets charging higher yet again, extending the run we had from yesterday. You zoom in on the action on the S&Ps right now, we're up a solid 1.27%. You're 58 points higher at 46.48. You back things up to the lows of Friday, folks. You're talking about a low of 44 92. So what is that? You're talking about 156 S&P points off of that low just from where we were on Friday. We were right down at that level on Wednesday of last week as well. Markets charging back. We're now within, that's right, about 90 points of all-time highs in the S&P. Remarkable action. NASDAQ charging higher as well. You get the NASDAQ 100 right now up about 279 points. Zooming in on the action just yesterday. Yes, just yesterday we had a low of 15,500. 59. You're talking about almost 600 points. NASDAQ 100, about 650 points from all-time highs. Dow up another 326 points. You're talking about a Dow now within 1,000 points of all-time highs, about 900 to be exact. You're now talking about 1,500 points from where we were last week on December 1st, and the Russell charging higher by 1.6%. The Russell bouncing nicely right near that lower boundary line that we've been in. Sometimes, folks, it's nice, you know, technical analysis doesn't have to be too difficult. You make it pretty simple. We have an area the Russell traded into at about 2150. That's an area of support going back all the way to March, basically. You had a March bounce, late March, bounced in that area in May, July, August and September, we come down to that area, you got the Russell bouncing. Now about, what are we talking about? 88 points off of the lows we had just a few days ago in the Russell. Bitcoin, Charging higher as well. Let's put it in a little shorter term action, even a 10 day, 30 minute. Bitcoin trades down to 42,000 over the weekend. We don't get a print for Bitcoin futures over the weekend, but the market does trade and it was down to about 42,000 in somewhat of a flash sell off back to 47,000 yesterday morning. Since then, we've been rising. You make it as high as almost 52,000 today, 51,750. Crude catching a bit as well, up another buck 64. Crude was down to $62 last week. You were trading at 66 on Friday. Monday, you were trading about 68. We're rising on those crude prices. We got the gold contract. Pretty tame action, all things considered, with what the market's been doing recently. You got gold trading at 1777, down a couple dollars. Silver right now is up by six pennies. And notes and bonds, we get a little bit of lower price and higher yield. You're talking about a 10 year right now, sitting at about 1.46%. The 10 year down six ticks, 130.15. I mean, look at the run we've had, that volatility on Friday's action to 131.16. And just like that, we give up a full point back to 1.46% to the upside, and we jump over to the VIX. If there's one thing for sure, folks, we have some volatility in this market. The VIX sitting at almost 24. Now, keep in mind, right? Yes, this is rightfully so, because this market cannot figure out. I got to figure out what, star, what article I had up here that was going to do that. Let me see if I can pull it up. Come on. There it is. Perfect. Uh, Talking about the volatility, okay, here is the daily point change in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. There's some volatility for you, folks, whether you're talking about upside or downside. The Friday, right after Thanksgiving, things really began with the Omicron variant the, uh, reverberating throughout the market. You could call it an irrational fear. Looks to be the case, at least for right now, how the market's responding. All indications are that it does spread much more rapidly but all indications, at least on the get-go, are that it's a milder case. Um, so a little bit of seesaw action as the market digests that news. But look at this action, 900 points, 237 to the upside. Then you trade down 1,100 points over two days, Tuesday and Wednesday of last week. Thursday, you get back 618, and yesterday we get back 647. And then today, we're going to get back... 321 points in the Dow. Now, the VIX trades off the S&P, but similar action, huge moves across the board uh, for this market. 
All right, let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks trading. We gotta talk about Apple, Apple charging higher yet again. You're gonna open almost $4 higher on Apple. You're bumping up against the all-time highs of 170.30. We jump to Microsoft shares, Microsoft, Microsoft up about $5 as well. From 326 to 331, we jump over to Google. Google up a solid $30 to $29.22 this morning. We jump to Facebook shares, Facebook up $4 to 322. We jump to Amazon, Amazon trading higher as well up another $60 after Amazon just Friday was trading at $33.38. You're going to be about $150 above that price level on the open at $34.86 this morning. Now, over in Europe, you have the DAX right now up more than 2%. DAX is up 2.1%. Uh, DAX is trading at 15702 and you're up 3 120 points in that index. I mean, you get the NASDAQ right now. These are big numbers. NASDAQ 100 is up 1.7% in our indices. Dow is up 9 tenths. S&P is up 1.4. And you get the Russell up 1.5. Tech stocks leading higher. And that is the headline I had pulled up to start things off. Tech stocks lead rebound. NASDAQ futures rally. Uh, Intel, how about Intel? They might be selling off their self-driving vehicle unit of their company in the middle of 22. The market loves that idea, and there's the acceleration. You got Intel up almost 10% right now, putting uh, quite the acceleration in some of the indices as well. Intel's trading at 55 bucks. You closed yesterday under at 51. Now, I was looking at Intel this morning. You take a look at even going back like a three-year weekly, not quite back down to that area of support, which I would call about $45 over the last three years. You back things up even further for a five year. You can see 45 was that area uh, jumping this morning. We're going to be right back to the 55 area on Intel shares. We got to jump over to, to NVIDIA. Quite the day for NVIDIA yesterday. You're up another $10 right now. We zoom in on just the action this year. NVIDIA down at 125 as recently as March. From there, you accelerate. We pushed 350 almost a couple weeks ago. Right now, you're trading at 300. Now, back on the daily action, look at the action we had yesterday. Let's put it on a 15 minute to bring in the overnight action as well. You spiked to 280 on the open. You finished the day at 300. And just like that, we're at 310. Okay, you're talking about adding $30 to the stock, to the price of this equity over 24 hours. That's like an 11% pop in NVIDIA. Uh, you could see why people have a fear of missing out, folks, selling this market. You sold off yesterday with some fears in the market. Boy, you just missed an 11% pop in NVIDIA shares. So much for the run being over. Be careful of this NVIDIA one, though. It looks a little toppy up here, folks, looking a little parabolic the way that rolled over. Yes, you've gotten a bounce. Uh, now, putting this back to a daily, okay? Yes, you've gotten a bounce. But you're talking about potentially just closing the gap that we had here left over from December 3rd to December 6th. That's Friday to Monday action. We close that gap right now. Now you do have a gap all the way up to 313.21. And that's the gap left open from November 17th to 18th. Nonetheless, little toppy, the multiples NVIDIA is dealing with pretty substantial at this point. Um, anytime you're dealing with those types of multiples, you can deal with extreme volatility. Um, as the multiples get recalculated potentially for future revenue earnings and growth. Now, you want an example of that, you go to Zoom. Zoom is a very strong company, folks, but they were dealing with multiples at 588 that obviously did not make sense. Now, in hindsight, they're down to 185. Zoom is a company that's growing rapidly, that they make money, but you watch out for those multiples, man. You get recoiled. How about DocuSign in a similar fashion? Uh, trading about 145, but boy, you were just trading at 315. That's a full wipeout if you're on margin for DocuSign. Stay tuned, folks. We got a lot of companies out. We got AutoZone out with their numbers. We'll take a look when we get back. We'll talk to our man Kevin Hicks as well. Stay tuned, folks. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. 
Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up 55 points right now. NASDAQ 100 up 268 points. That's a solid 1.7%. The Dow right now up more than 300. And the Russell up 32 points. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, noon Eastern time. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market, breaking down the day's market action, walking you through hypothetical trade setups, talking about options, talking about defined risk, folks. Uh, boy, you talk about volatility in this market. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. You know, it's uh, I don't want to call this the beginning of the Santa Claus rally because I do not think it is, especially when we have a uh, CPI number coming out on Friday that could certainly cause some volatility. But this is certainly a great snapback rally from Friday's sell-off, as I think the Omicron variant, some of the uncertainty is starting to lessen. Some of the fear and anxiety over this is starting to lessen. Uh, and uh, I think the market is reacting really positively to that, Tommy. It is pretty amazing, Kevin, in terms of the last time we talked to you was last Thursday. And it's remarkable. The last two times we've had a weekend, man, over Thanksgiving, uh, things really started to accelerate. And even since last Thursday, Kevin, we had uh, quite the volatility on Friday. We've gotten it all back and then some in the S&Ps now. We have a VIX, Kevin, this morning trading at 24 which is pretty remarkable probably rightfully so with the volatility we're getting in both directions but pretty remarkable that we have a vix so high when you have the market so close to to all-time highs where, where does your head go when you look at something like that where it's like normally right the vix gets elevated when there's extreme volatility sometimes to the downside in particular that's been the case we hit 35 on friday but still a pretty elevated level at 24 considering the s and p's are within about 90 points i think where are we of all-time highs yeah i think the vix is a reflection of everything that's going on in this market. And we're getting, let's face it, Tommy, we're getting big moves. VIX is also a reflection of the percentage moves that, that we're getting on almost daily basis. And all you got to do, Tommy, put up a year chart of the VIX. And you can okay. see the uncertainty that's been going through the market the last, oh, one, two, three, four, maybe five, six, seven day, trading days. It's yes. pretty heightened. And so, yeah, even the fact it's starting the day around... 24, that's down more than three points from where it closed yesterday, 
uh, we're certainly not out of the woods yet. And I expect volatility to stay elevated, uh, at least for a time being. But if this variant starts to diminish and its risks start to diminish, that number could come down significantly, Tommy. It's it's pretty cool as a trader, and hopefully, you know, we never get the the worst news that everybody puts out that a variant it could be the worst. That could always be the case, folks. You know, in, in any type of environment, that that was always present. But it's pretty interesting, Kevin, that it seems like, in my opinion, there's so much volatility to come that these types of events, even rightfully so or not, as in the market overreacting, is something that I think is going to be on our radar, man, for like the next year at least. And then you throw in that with the volatility we could see. With the Fed, that's so much up in the air, and that's a real factor. You know, whether you talk about irrational fears with the variants, this one looks like it was a little irrational, but you can see why the market might flip out considering what happened, you know, a year and a half ago in March. Uh, but the Fed is a real deal, man. I imagine this volatility, when we come into these meetings, we come into a number like Friday, like you're talking about. Uh, it's just interesting times to live in, man, where we're gonna, I see a two-way volatile market for the foreseeable future, uh, which is why I love options so much sometimes, man, because the VIX is at 24, and we we got markets that are open up. I woke up this morning, Kevin, and I looked at the S&Ps. I said, man, this market is amazing, right? I said, what a day, as in just to open positive off of the run we had yesterday, let alone opening up more than 1% and tech stocks really charging higher. So we got earnings going on, Kevin. What are you guys going to be chatting about at 12 o'clock coming out today? Portfolio is going to do a presentation on the uh, retailer Stitch Fix. They have earnings coming out uh, after the bell today. And then we're going to probably look at start looking at sectors. Uh, we have good earnings coming up later in the week, but not a lot coming out after the day of top tier. So what we're going to do today, we're going to look at the banks. Well, how, how do the banks, fi you know, find themselves going into the end of the year with interest rates, you know, all over the board and sitting right now at one four six? How does that? How should you set yourself up as an investor to trade the banks and financials going into next year? I mean, that's awesome. I'm going to be listening to that one, Kevin, because I find myself running that scenario around in my own head, right? It's like you have yep. like JP Morgan, I'll start off with. They're probably my favorite. You're sitting at 161, pretty much near all time highs of 173 just recently in October. But you're talking about above where we came into 2020 at 140. You're talking about we chopped around at about 100 for the better part of 2020. And I agree. You have a, an environment right now where yields are at 1.46%. If you think they're going up, Banks are probably going to benefit if you think there's going to be an extreme amount of volatility in the market with what we've seen recently. Maybe banks provide a little bit of safe haven from that volatility if we have some rising yields. Uh, I was reading this morning, Kevin, as well. W what's your take? And I'll throw a real one at you, right? In terms of we have a real yield that, that might be negative right now, right? With the inflation we have, with the yields we have, uh, and just the general talk of like a 60-40 portfolio mix and how that's been so tough. Do you ever think about that one, Kevin? Because I've been thinking about that one just as a general like theoretical principle exercise. And it's pretty interesting with where yields are and inflation coming in, how that mix might be kind of in flux right now. Well, what's your take on that well, one? Well, I, now the, the million dollar question. I am not ahead. a <laughs> money manager. I am a trader. So I look at the market from a you don't have to be in bonds all the time, right? There's a place where money will get treated the best. And right now you can make a case that's not in the bond market, right? And so even though a normal person's portfolio should have some bonds in it, as a trader, I don't see a lot of value in the bond market right now. And with yields 1.4, I think with some certainty that I can find better places to store money like dividend paying stocks and other stocks like that that give me a better chance now a money manager would have a much different take on that than sure. me as a trader but me as a trader i have a real tough time trading any bond when yields are this low tommy or getting involved having any fraction of my portfolio so i think there's a time where you want to be in bonds um i think interest rates are going higher so long term so I'm not sure this is the time, but that's me, and I'm, I trade differently than money managers do. 
you do a great job of explaining it, man. And I probably couldn't agree more with what you said. I was hoping you'd get to dividend stocks because that's where my head pretty much goes. And I'm a trader, too. Um, but, you know, risk management is one of the biggest factors, folks, especially when you talk about retirement and anything. So, yeah, um, that is a factor on its own right. But I do, Kevin, I look at stocks, whether it's like, you know, Verizon, my mom was in Verizon, all right, I'm biased there, she has some Verizon folks, but stocks like that that are putting out some serious dividends, my dad was talking about even a stock like AT&T. Now this thing, folks, be careful, because it's been a straight shot from 32 bucks to 23, but you're talking about right now, Kevin, a dividend in AT&T of like seven, eight, nine percent something like that, right. which is pretty crazy. And, and well, the question is, you're right. That's one thing when you trade these dividend stocks, you have downside risk sure. in the underlying. Yeah. But at some point, is, is AT&T going out of business? I don't think so. Right. right? I agree, I mean, man. Yeah. So maybe a small fraction of your portfolio could absolutely be buying some of these dividend stocks as long as you feel that the company is safe. Remember, or if the maybe some banks. And I'm, the stock is sold I'm off, throwing that in. Different. Maybe some banks in the same way. They got some dividends. We'll be watching for that bank section today, Kevin. We appreciate the conversation, man. Have a great show at noon. Thanks, Tommy. Thank you, Are as you always. having we'll right fun back. trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We got the S&Ps up 59 points right now. Taking a look at the S&Ps, folks. Sent this out to my subscribers yesterday, just talking about potentially. Uh, now, again, technical analysis, folks. It is an art, not a science. If, it's, if it was a science, it could be solved. Uh, 
you can't solve it because you're playing a world of probabilities, folks, that can go wrong or right. You play a number as in a sample size large enough. The probability should equal out over time. Taking a look at this S&P uh, using you know, something like a little linear regression, as in the, the peaks and the troughs lining up for the best fit to that line, the best curve fit, you could call it, uh, we would be approaching the lower boundary line, which is remarkable. You, now, yeah, you're not including the very flash low of 2174 in the S&Ps, but this has taken the run basically from April, okay? And you chopped around below 2500 in the S&Ps from about March 12th to April 3rd. From there, this thing takes off. We got a little bit ahead of ourselves in June, got ahead of ourselves in September as well, really chopped around towards the upper portion of that line where it took off in November, where we got the vaccine efficacy numbers, but remarkable that we would be bouncing off the lower boundary line. Now, where that exact lower boundary line fits, you could see maybe it's a little bit lower from the lows recently, but nonetheless, you trade to the top boundary line of what we're talking about, you're pushing above 4,800 in the S&Ps. We got the S&Ps this morning up 60 points, all the markets holding on to basically all the gains. We got the NASDAQ 100 right now up 1.8%, the Dow up 340, and the Russell up 35 Bitcoin up 2300 bucks and gold is up a buck 70 at 1781. Okay, jumping around to what uh, a couple things here. First, staying with the banks, always interesting. Goldman Sachs CEO David Solomon says he expects lower returns in stocks over the next few years. Folks, this should be a no brainer, okay? As in, you better believe that lower returns are possible when you have a market that just traded from the beginning of 2020 at 30, what did we open at? 3238, something like that, all right? We'll call it 3200 for simple math. We're up 1,450 points from that price level, folks. 1,600 points would be a 50% return over two years, okay? You see the trajectory. There are gonna be winners and losers. Now, let's back it up even further than that. A five-year weekly, we chopped around for a bit in the part of 2018 and 2019, okay, before we gave it all back in 2020. Put this thing back even further, though. Boy, you talk about a run since 2008, folks. 6, 65, 75 to 4,600. I mean, what is that talking about? How many times money is that from, from 2009, the lows of March of 2009? Talking about a seven-bagger, an eight-bagger for 13 years. You see the trajectory we're on. Uh, and it's not... It's just not outlandish, folks. People just, uh, I think their expectations are a little bit out of check. My dad's been talking about on his show that we could really see a consolidation for a year or two. I think we'd be fortunate to see a consolidation for a year or two after you have those types of returns. And I imagine it's possible. Now, staying on the dividend trend, because this is where my mind goes in terms of as a trader and as an investor, it would make sense, folks, that you have a portion of your portfolio for long-term whether it's retirement assets, maybe it's just long-term investments, okay, that you have a little bit more tolerance for volatility for, but you're looking for long-term. Uh, when you start to get into some of these, now, as I said, I am biased, folks. Verizon has, uh, my mom worked for Verizon. She does have Verizon shares. It's pulled back this year, but it is a very strong dividend stock. You pull up the Analyze tab, you get over to the fundamentals. With this pullback, you now have Verizon and I'm gonna to jump to AT&T next, but Verizon's talking about a dividend yield of about 4.7%. The 10-year is 1.46, I think. Let's let's get exact. What are we talking about on the 10-year right now? 1.46%, exactly. And you have Verizon with about a three percentage gap above that for dividend yield if you just stay where we are. Now, yeah, you are not gonna get the type of growth that you may get with some other stocks in this equity, but nonetheless, you're talking about 4.6%. Now, you jump over to AT&T. Now, here, let's let's give the whole case here first all right this is a monthly going back to where are we going back to all the way back to 1985 you take a look at the monthly going back to about whether you start in 2005 you take the lows that we had in 2010 uh breaking below that channel line kind of not what you want to see there on verizon but the trend has been to the upside now quite a different story for at&t you talk about at&t and uh, my dad was bringing this one up yesterday. He realized, you know, you're back to 1997 prices. You're back to where we were in 2002 prices for AT&T. I talked about the beginning of the show in terms of an area of support. We are back to that area in support in AT&T. Now, here's the other thing I'll say to that. This thing's been on a one-way trip to the downside since 2016. You got quite a reprieve coming into 2020 before things really fell out of bed. But the point being, you jump over to the 
dividend yield at these prices, you're talking about 7.7% yield, a market cap of 165 billion right now for AT&T shares. Something to think about, folks, in a big way. Now, the article that I was looking at that I'll t just bring up real quick. Where are we? Maybe that's it? Nope, that's not it. There we go. Inflation is the biggest threat to the Bedrock 6040 portfolio. Uh, as somebody that loves game theory, loves just uh, the theories that apply to everything, thinking about this traditional mix and how it will hold in an environment where you actually have negative real yields when you put money into bonds. Uh, this article, if you get a chance to read it over in Bloomberg, let's see, it is out, yeah, this morning, uh, Michael McKenzie and Liz McCormick. And some of the tidbits in here, okay, now, some of the statistics they cherry pick here, I think are unfair to the kind side for this split. As in, okay, so here's where they talk about the break even. The five year so called break even inflation rate has jumped to around 2.8% from 1.8% a year ago. That's down from 3.2% in mid November. You're still talking about five year break even rate of 2.8%. We got a 10 year yield of now under 1.46%. Uh, investors got a sense of what that could look like in September when inflation flared, stocks and bonds simultaneously fell. That's the worry there, folks, okay? Now, you have a lot of managers in here talking about it. It's very difficult when you look at it versus, you know, a trader versus a manager, but, yeah, and this is where, I mean, you're talking about potentially 5% returns for that mix to 3.8% returns somebody has in here. You have uh, somebody from T. Rowe said shares of utilities are better positioned than treasuries. They're growing their earnings at 6%, pay 3% dividend yield. This is kind of the mentality I was talking about. But then you get over to another gentleman, Faber, who are we talking about here maybe? Meb Faber, CIO at Cambria Investments. Um, sees the 60-40 return in the low single digits over the next decade. Vanguard recently updated its forecast to 60-40 to a median annualized gain of 3.8% over the next 10 years. That's a tough one, folks, when you're dealing with the inflation you're talking about. Uh, yeah, they talk. Some people have boosted their allocation to 80-20. And the other side of that, which is why I kind of asked Kevin, is that what other clients are doing is that they're adding 10% dividend equities. Now, I would even skew it even further, folks. You put some money in equities, you put some money in some good dividend equities that you believe in, and then you have some exposure to bonds. But even 30% at these prices where they're a negative real yield seems a little bit worrisome. And I'm going to pull out some statistics here in terms of what they cherry pick. Uh, in this to kind of illustrate. We'll talk a little bit more about this when we get back because it's important to understand. When you're talking about, you know, retirement, portfolio, risk management, just because something worked in the past, we are dealing with different times, inflation rearing its head. S&P's up 65. We'll be right back, folks. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps right now up 65 points. NASDAQ 100 up 305, 16,146. The Dow holding on to the gains. Pretty interesting open as in sitting right where we opened uh, for the futures at 930. And the Russell, though, charging higher up 2.2% right now for the Russell. Just trying to pull up those exact figures uh, in this long article. It's a decent one on that 60-40 split. I'll pull it up after the break again. Because they talk about in here that it's only returned something like two negative years or one negative year since 2008. Uh, okay, I'll pull it up after the break, unfortunately. Okay, let's jump through some of the stocks that are moving with action already this morning. I'll pull it over here so you can check it out. American Airlines CEO Doug Parker, he's going to step down from that job on March 31st. He's going to remain chairman. He'll be replaced as CEO by the current president, Robert Issam. Uh, American, higher on that. Now, all the travel stocks are higher today, so I'm not sure it's exactly on that because you get back some of it. You're still up about 2.1% for American. You jump over to Delta, though, it's up 1.6% right now. You jump over to United, it's up 1.7%. So not really to have to do with the changing of the guard over there. Uh, we jumped to the cruise ships. Quite the run yesterday as it looked like the Omicron fears were overstated. This morning, you trade higher than get back some of the gains. You got Carnival up 2.2%. Norwegian right now up 3.4%. Uh, quite the run those stocks had yesterday. But you talk about some max pain. These equities, Norwegian, be careful of this one, folks, because you have broken below that channel line. You could get back up there. Keep your eye on it if you are going to be in this equity. And, man, there's some nice volatility. These are some decent equities to be trading as long as you have stops in place. Uh, watch out for as we come up to that level. But, man, you're talking about a 6 to $7 move potentially before we get back up to that trend line. Uh, that would be almost a 30% pop from current prices. And this market is just not stopping, folks. We get the S&P right now up almost 70 points. That's a weekly. Let's put it back on a daily. You look at the action, and as I talked about, here's your trend line. Look at how quickly we've gotten into almost the middle of that pack, and you are now within 80 points of all-time highs. Let's check out the VIX this morning. Volatility index, 23.34. As Kevin said, you put it up on the year. And yeah, this is an event like we have not seen, folks. Yes, you saw one in February up to 37.51, but not as sustained as we've kind of held on to right now, all the way from the Friday after Thanksgiving uh, to kind of the volatility that we've experienced even this week by itself to the upside. Okay, let's jump down to some of the other stocks. We got AutoZone out with their numbers. Talk about a beat. 25.69 a share. The market was looking for 20.87. Revenue beat as well. And how about the comp store beat? 13.6%. Six, and the market was only looking for a 5% comp. Comps are one of the most impressive things 
uh, in my opinion, because yes, expansion is a big part of these companies growing and the market cap of these companies growing. But just the way they're able to grow a comp store sale, I mean, imagine if you just had a small business, right? You were growing that business's individual sales, selling auto parts at almost 14% from last year. A staggering, staggering number. AutoZone, you're up another 1% today. Now, this thing has been just a rocket ship this year from 1,200. We come into earnings at just shy of 1,900. We're talking about pushing right near all-time highs in 1941. And there's your action on the open. Actually giving up some of the gains, though, back to 1896. Man, some of these equities, they just make you pay big time if you don't beat across the board in a big way. Because that is a big beat, folks. And uh, they traded down from the open. You're already down about 40 bucks from where you were pre-market. You're down about $25 from where you were on the open. AutoZone up less than 1%. Meanwhile... We have the S&P up 1.6%, okay? So AutoZone underperforming the market, coming out with those type of numbers. Watch out, folks. CRM comes to mind. Salesforce, now they're going to be higher today. Yeah, they're up 2.2%, but they really fell out of bed yes, last week on their earnings. We have some Salesforce in my newsletter. Been in there for a while, so we're in a profitable position because the run-up it's had recently, uh, but breaking below that channel line. Now, let's just put it back on a daily. Not what you want to see, but the point, reason why I bring it up is because they had a pretty marginal miss for their guidance and the market made them pay dearly. Now, what I will also say is that that was not the time to be missing on your earnings when the market was already freaking out about potential slowdowns, about potential inflation. Uh, they come out with their numbers when the market had already sold off. The market makes them, makes them pay dearly. Uh, but just keep it in mind because some of these companies are priced so high. Now, I believe in Salesforce. But boy, they got uh, punished dearly for a slight miss in any way, just like you're seeing almost AutoZone getting paying the price. Now check out this market, folks. It's just not stopping. S&P's up 77 points right now. All right, continuing down the line, uh, designer brands out with their numbers. They beat as well, beat by 30 cents. They come in at 86 cents. Comp store sales, how about that number? 40.8%, but less than the 44% the market was looking for. I mean, that's just, uh, we live in interesting times, folks. N probably, hopefully, won't see that type of comp store sales ever again, as in you're going back to a time of last December when the world was very, very different. A lot of those stores not doing a lot of business. Designer brands are now up 8.3%. And just taking a look at the run we had from the beginning of the pandemic, 1583, you dive down to $2 and change, you make it to 20 bucks earlier this year, and we're back almost unchanged for the better part of two years, but they're up 8.5%. There's your five-minute action, so some volatility on their numbers. Looks like the conference call going pretty well this morning on that open. Yeah, Tesla dealing with some problems here, having to do with uh, faulty cameras on its models. I saw an article out last night talking about, and I just read the headline, so I don't, I don't even remember where it was, just saying that Elon Musk put progress ahead of safety when they were plowing ahead with that car development. That's why... You know, it's so important to have those regulators, folks, or something like that. And it is important because, you know, you can't trust somebody like Elon Musk just to do the safe thing and keep things in check as he's trying to create his fleet of self-driving cars. Hopefully that's something that uh, regulators really get their hands on because this is going to be coming mainstream. And Tesla had been taking a lot of heat recently that they probably were not being as safe as they should have been as they introduced all that technology. But guess what? Can't hold a good stock down. Tesla's up 3%. Let's jump around to some of those FANG stocks this morning. Amazon getting a 2% lift at 3,500. Apple up 2.5%. That's an all-time high, folks, on Apple. You jump over to the Analyze tab. We're not quite there yet, but you better start thinking about it because Apple's at $2.8 trillion, folks. And that means that every share price, every dollar in Apple, I say it all the time, but it's remarkable, adds 16 billion dollars 16.4 to be exact to the market capitalization so what do you need you need about 13 dollars you need to be at about 183 for apple to reach uh three trillion dollars that's only 13 dollars and you're up five bucks today folks that's only 13 dollars and you're up 13 dollars from where we were trading last thursday apple totally in the mix of coming in at a three trillion dollar market capitalization remarkable microsoft shares this morning up 1.7 percent these tech stocks are just roaring higher in a big way facebook getting a lift at 1.4 percent facebook's its own animal folks uh you want to talk about some volatility i mean zuckerberg's got quite the plan it might be the plan for the future, but man, they got a long time to go to reap the benefits of 
living online in the metaverse, as they say. Not sure investors are going to like the fact that Facebook might be taking all their profits they make off of those beautiful online ads we see on Facebook, I kid, and plowing it into the development of their metaverse. I don't know. We'll see how that plays out all the way back to a 618 of the run it had from March. Facebook shares up 1.3% today. S&P's up 1.7. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. I got Intel up here. Intel up 5.2%, giving back some of the gains, though, on the news that they will be going public with their self-driving unit. So they'll still be the largest shareholder of that unit. Uh, interesting, too, when you pull it up. Where is... Uh I just had a bigger article talking about it. But nonetheless, they bought this unit for something like $15 billion, I think, in 2017 or something like that. Where are we? No? It's too bad. I just had it up. All right. Uh, well, either way, and the last thing I want to talk about continuing the run on Facebook and Instagram is that you have, yeah, I guess I closed out what I was looking at, unfortunately, uh, is you have the Instagram head will be in front of Congress, I believe, today or tomorrow. Let me get this right. Because it's just, uh, I say it, folks, because the headline here is that Instagram is going to nudge people to take a break from scrolling. 
not a coincidence that they try and put out these updates to 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 be not so evil the day before their Instagram CEO goes in front of Congress. Uh, yeah, he is going to appear Wednesday before the U.S. Senate subcommittee probing children's safety on social media. I mean, Instagram knows, folks, that they are just destroying people's mindsets, and uh, that's the way they make the most money. So I have kind of very little patience for that when people are building wealth doing that type of damage. Nonetheless, Facebook up 1.6% right now ahead of that news. But as I talked about, they have some headwinds in a big way. S&P is just not stopping. Look at this open, folks. From where we were at 920, you're talking about adding 30 points. We just added another 30 points from where we were at 920. You're now, as we back things up, approaching are we going to get new all-time highs this week could you believe that if we got new all-time highs just that quick folks we are 70 points away from all-time highs and we're up 80 points today so you better believe it's possible we'll jump over to the vix volatility index trading at 2290 we'll check in on intel shares up 5.4 percent and we'll check in on apple the largest company in the world pushing 2.8 trillion dollar market cap and remember folks you got to get to 183 bucks put it on your radar they'll start talking about for three trillion dollar company thanks so much for starting your day with me folks stay tuned basil chapman's up next we got our man larry pesamento at 11 fast market at 12 remember they're gonna be talking about those banks at one point for fast market talking stitch fix as well we got our man steve rhodes at one o'clock dave white at two o'clock my dad Tom Ryan wraps it up live three till four have a great tuesday everybody